While you can provide settings and a mapping when you create the index, we've seen that you don't have to. Elasticsearch wants you to get to work, so it allows you to start by using some sensible defaults. There are default values for all settings in Elasticsearch, and you can get a long way without having to worry about changing any of them. So settings have sensible defaults, but what about mappings? In the section on documents, we added a document to an index that didn't exist, and Elasticsearch created the index and its mapping for us. Now this is a two-step process. The blank index with an empty mapping gets created first, then the mapping is updated as the document is indexed. This is what's called a dynamic mapping. This means that if a document being indexed contains a field that's not in the index's mapping, Elasticsearch will add the field to the mapping for you. I'll index one of those documents again, but in several steps to show the process. I'll create the new index first. I'll now add part of a weather event document. The mapping contains properties for all the fields in the document. If we add another document, but this one contains all the fields, Elasticsearch will see that some of the fields are in the mapping already, but add the new fields to the mapping. We can imagine how Elasticsearch figures out that it needs to add new fields to the mapping, but how does it translate the value in a JSON document to an Elasticsearch field type? There are four different types of data in the mapping, float, long, date, and text. The text field actually has another type associated with it, keyword, which I'll explain shortly. Elasticsearch decides the field type to use based on some rules and configuration. It will look at what type of data the field holds, then map that to an Elasticsearch field type. The rainfall rate and the temperature fields in the JSON document are numbers with a decimal component. This gets turned into an Elasticsearch float. Pressure and station ID are numbers without a decimal point, which Elasticsearch maps to a long. JSON doesn't have a date type, so they get written out as a string. Elasticsearch has much richer support for data types, so we'll do a bit more work with string fields to try and detect the right type to use in the mapping. One of those checks is to see if a string field is actually a date. If Elasticsearch detects a date in the string field, then the field type in the mapping will be set to a date. This is what happened with the timestamp field. This detection is enabled by default, but it can be disabled by specifying faults for date underscore detection in your mappings block when you're creating the index. If date detection fails, Elasticsearch will, by default, create a multi-field. It'll use a text data type with a keyword subfield. We'll see more on subfields later, but for now, just remember that if date detection fails, Elasticsearch will assume the field value is text. I said by default because there's another detection that can run if date detection fails. I'll give an example first. I'll delete the weather data three index, then recreate it with a slightly different document. I've wrapped some of the numeric values in quotes. Having a look at the mapping Elasticsearch has created, it's created text fields for the station ID, temperature, and wind speed fields. It hasn't seen that there's actually a number in each of those strings. Numeric detection can be enabled by creating the index before adding the first document and specifying some configuration in the mappings block. I'll recreate the index with this setting enabled and index that same document again. With numeric detection enabled, Elasticsearch has seen that there are numerics in those strings, then run the usual logic to figure out which of the numeric types to use in the mapping. Dynamic mappings are fine when you're getting started with Elasticsearch or you're working with a new dataset. Once you have a more concrete idea of how you want to use the data, you want to be much more deliberate with your mapping. This is where an explicit mapping will be beneficial. So let's look at that next. 